Sumo and Oxid, so darn in Fosaka, Kadu, Boxe, Adbuga. If that's the first thing you heard on your first day of school, you might have a reaction like this. You'd be scared, apprehensive, confused, not understand anything what the teacher just said. What I said in Somalian was, good morning, welcome to class, take out your book. We're a global society. 20% of people in America speak a different language in their own home. And 9% of grade school and high school students are ELL, or English language learners. They speak all different languages and are for all, from all different walks of life. We have to understand that ELL students are not trying to take over your classroom. They're trying to assimilate into it. When we're out in public, we have to realize that if people are speaking in a language unfamiliar to us, they're not talking about us. They're trying to find groceries or order in a restaurant in their own language. My learning partners for this exercise were a math teacher from El Salvador named Victor, a mother of two from Yemen named Maimona, a farm laborer from Mexico named Herman, and a student from Somalia named Abi, Abdi Omar. Over six periods of class sessions, I watched and interviewed these students. Why they learn is to get better jobs, increase their position at their job, talk to their neighbors, discuss things with teachers, be able to communicate with doctors, order in restaurants, travel, order, uh, find things they want in stores. And as one student told me, he wanted to be more American. ELL is needed in schools. It's a basic interpersonal communication skill. They need it to communicate with their friends on the playground and lunchroom, discuss things at parties, communicate on sports and on the phone. Cognitive language proficiency is important because all the classes that they are studying in are taught in English. It is essential for school and career success. When you teach, you need to know your students' school experiences. What grade did they attend through it in their native language? You need to know their culture. How is education thought of in their culture and the importance of it? They need to know your world experiences. Many of the students have vastly different world experiences than your average grade school or high school student. Abdi Omar traveled from Syria for, through Saudi, America, Saudi Arabia to Boston and St. Peter all in his first 12 years of life. Quite a different uh, aspect than most high school students. When you learn about their previous knowledge, make connections to that. Use things that they know to connect with things you're trying to teach them. The don'ts when teaching ELL, don't make them the spokesperson for their entire culture. Just because they're from a country doesn't mean they, they espouse that ideology or even know that what that ideology is. Don't put them in, on the spot in front of their new classmates. They are having enough trouble learning and learning in English. So don't put them on the spot and expect them to stand up in front of people and, and ex express an idea. The big thing is don't confuse quietness with ignorance. They hear you, they probably understand you, and they are learning. Just because they're quiet doesn't mean they're not paying attention or assimilating information. A few more don'ts. Don't raise your voice when trying to teach them. If they don't understand something when you're speaking it quietly, it doesn't mean they're going to understand it better if you speak it loudly. Don't expect kids not to act like kids. There's going to be class clowns. There's going to be people that talk to their friends. There's going to be people that forget things, just like every other student that you have. Don't expect miracles. Don't expect them to learn your content in English in a year. It takes five to seven years to master the English language. So be patient. Some do's. If you're teaching a writing class or having a class where they have to write something, if they're not comfortable writing in English, allow them to write it in their native language. Even if you don't understand it, go find a ELL teacher or a student that can speak both languages and have them translate it. Grade it from there. Work, let them work with same language speakers. Two students collaborating while you teach is a lot better uh, use of their knowledge because they can share it. They can both come up with ideas 
And uh, just like you know, it's, two heads are always better than one. Let them know about other learning opportunities. A couple of the students that I dealt with said they had no idea that there was ELL classes until they moved to Minnesota. In their previous states they lived in, they were just figured they were at their station in life and they would end up being a cook or a meat cutter or a laborer and they, they had no options to improve themselves. Also let them know it's okay to fail. Let them relax and laugh like other students. They tend to be very serious and worried about how they're doing, but lighten the mood once in a while. Remember, an ELL student is doing four times the work that your average student. They're learning the language. They're adjusting to the climate. Doesn't have many blizzards in Saudi Arabia, Somalia, or El Salvador, so know that they're dealing with those things too. They're adjusting, adjusting moving into a new culture. Understand what is, the, they need to understand what is the norm and what is expected of them in the school setting and sports settings and social settings. They're also developing new friendships. All these things put together can bombard them with a lot of sensory input. So understand that it's gonna take time. We know that English is easy for us, but it's a goofy language. It's a very hard language for them to understand. They don't understand sometimes how words can mean two or three things. I came up with this sentence. The mole picked his mole while eating a mole, watching a mole, and thinking about the mole concept. The same word mole meaning five different things. The mole meaning a spy, picked his mole meaning a birthmark, while eating a mole, which is a sauce, watching a mole, which is an animal, and thinking about the mole concept, which is a concept of math, mass in science. Pretty confusing for me, let alone someone that doesn't even speak the language. Also, you have to understand they're trying. They wouldn't be in an ELL class if they weren't. So be patient, be understanding, and understand that they appreciate what you're doing.